No, you're all supposed to, in one accord, to, uh, agree with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Our visitors laughing. Yes, yes. I guess there's no secrets. Okay, so we've been in this series of lessons on the parables of Jesus, which um, um, I look at them a, a couple of different ways. Uh, one is that they almost always talk about um, what is the kingdom of God like? What is it like when God's rule is in our lives and in our world? Um, how would we know, right? What would happen? And so often uh, throughout the parables in the New Testament, Jesus will say, the kingdom of God is like, and then tell some bizarre story that nobody understands. You know? So um, the other one is that uh, when I look at the parables, it's a, um, it's, almost a way of uh, getting a, a portrait of who God is. Uh, now, I'm no, I'm no artist, you know that, so, uh, but um, those of you who are know that, like when you do a painting, you get some slashes of color here or there, or some dots or um, different shadows and things, and you don't really see it all as it comes about until it's all done, and then you go, oh, that's what that is. And so the parables give us little slashes and dabs of color about who God is. Uh, and uh, it's almost like a self-portrait of God, as Jesus tells these different parables. Um, today, we're going to look at uh, two parables that Jesus tells together, maybe because they're very similar. So it's in Matthew uh, chapter 13. Uh, beginning in verse um, 31. And if you're new to all this, the, the big numbers are chapters and the little numbers are verses. That's how, that's how I do it. Okay, so. Um, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a person took and planted in his field. And though it's the smallest of all your seeds, Yet when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes like a tree, so the birds of the air come and perch on its branches. That's what the kingdom of God's like. Okay. He told him still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. And Jesus spoke these things uh, to the crowd in parables. He didn't say anything to them without using a parable. So, let's look at those. Pray with me. Wait, we got music. Sorry. Prayer music. Prayer music. At least if you got a phone, have it stir it up, because that's the name of the sermon. You know? <laughs> stir it up. Okay. Uh, okay, let's pray. Lord, Lord, we need you. We need you in our life. We need you in our world. Uh, we need you in small ways and great ways. And uh, help us to um, be sensitive to what you're doing in us and what you want to do through us. And uh, give us the courage to, to trust you in the process as your, as your rule takes place in and around us. You teach us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we have these two parables. The uh, little mustard seed, um, of which Jesus said in another place, he was talking to his disciples, he said, you know, you, you think you need a lot of faith. If you have enough faith, uh, like a little mustard seed, that would be more than, you'd move mountains with that. Right? Which is kind of the opposite of most uh, uh, television evangelists. I notice that a lot of times they're, uh, they're saying you need more faith. And that actually your faith is what's going to heal you or cure you or fix you or whatever it is that you need. If you only had more faith, and then if you don't get healed, fixed, uh, whatever happens, if that doesn't happen, it's because you didn't have enough faith. So really, this is your problem. But Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, no, actually, this is God's problem. It's not, it's not you just need a little, little bit, you know, a little mustard seed bit. And God's going to do it anyway. So uh, it's not having a lot. It's just this little bit. So he said, well, so if you want to know what God's kingdom is like, What's, how does it work? What's it like? So it's like this guy that goes out and he, and he plants this little seed in the field, right? And then it takes root and it grows and it, and it becomes much bigger than it ever was. So um, a, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the parables and we looked at the parable of the, 
soils, remember that? The different kinds of soils, like the, there was a rocky ground, and there was a hard path, and there was all this stuff. And uh, this is kind of the opposite. This is uh, not about our receptivity, but it's about what happens when God has his way in our life. And uh, um, you know that I'm, I am like the opposite of Larry, who's the master gardener, you know, from the Utah. I'm the opposite of that. I'm like the, uh, the brown thumb guy who kills every plant. Um, but, and you've heard my terrible, sad stories. You've wept probably with me over stories <laughs> about my gardening uh, attempts. Um, yeah. Um, but I did have this one experience uh, where I had this little raised bed and I was going to try and grow something, you know. So I, I, I went and I bought a bunch of these seed packs, you know. I was going to, I was going to, I was going to have a, the farm, you know, the whole deal. And uh, nothing ever grew. And I forgot about it, and uh, you know. Uh, about two years later, I went out and I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do something this year. This year is going to be the year. And so I, I started. Uh, kind of digging up the ground, and I found this seed pack. <laughs> a whole packet unopened of seeds for uh, bell peppers, you green bell peppers? And you know, what a lie. If you look at it, it goes, you know, these plants will flourish in 75 days. It's been two years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they will produce uh, beautiful fruit four by four inches. Yeah. Nothing. And I'm thinking, this is false advertising. <laughs> we should sue them. You know, I got a whole pack of seeds. I didn't get anything, anything out of it. It's kind of like my spiritual life. You know, because uh, I, spent, I spent way too much time in church, you know. And, uh, and the thing is, sometimes we as Christians, we, we think, well, you know, God's going to do something because we all are meeting here together. Ooh, isn't that something? We're meeting here together, and we're talking to each other, and we all kind of agree with each other about stuff, and we look at the Bible, and we all kind of agree about the Bible together, and, and uh, we look at lives, and we say, yeah, well, those people who aren't like us, you know, they have problems, but, but we got it together, you know, and we're like a bunch of seeds in the pack, <laughs> and we wonder why we're not growing. And we're in our pack, I know, brother, we haven't been spread out in the ground, we haven't been, we haven't been buried yet, you know, without the nice, safe pack. And we wonder, how can we read about in the Bible about all this growth and, and prosperity and all these, uh, you know, we're going to be fruitful in our lives and God's presence, we're going to see it, and, and we're not seeing it, and we wonder why as we sit in our little seed packet. <laughs> now we are in the garden, but that's something, right? That works for us. And, uh, and when there were some pretty good looking seeds, you know, I mean, just look around. But there's not a lot of growth, is there? Why? No, that's, a little, that's, not a, that's not a rhetorical question. That's a literal question. Why is there no growth? There's no water. In the seed packet. Why? It's not in the dirt. Oh, you didn't open it up the packet. Oh! See, brilliant. Brilliant people here. Yes! <laughs> you have, and they didn't tell you that on the packet, though. They don't say, open this and then pour it in. You know, they don't say, no, now whatever you do, John, don't just stick this under the ground. <laughs> 79 cents wasted. <laughs> Shows you how long ago that was. <laughs> We're probably 239 now. But anyway, but you know, get out. So we have to get out of the packet, right? And we have to get in the ground. We have to get buried in the ground. I go, well, I don't want to go in there because that's dirty. Weird stuff can happen, you know? There's germs, there's uh, worms, hopefully, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> There's uh, people walking around on top, you know. It, it can get hurt down in there, in the dirt, right? And it's lonely because you're, if you're in the packet, you're all there with the other seeds, right? It's all great. When you're down there in the, in the ground by yourself, you go, it's dark here. What's God doing? But the growth never happens unless we get out of the packet and we allow ourselves to be put into the ground and we let, and we get past the fear and we get past the loneliness and we get past whatever it is that's done so that God can do his work in us and we can start growing. <coughs> the growth never happens when we're sitting in the packet. 
Then Jesus talks about this yeast thing. Now, I'm a terrible gardener, but on the other hand, I'm a fabulous cook, okay? So I just <laughs> want you to know that. And uh, I discovered this uh, French bakery down on 45th, uh, kind of near the uh, Guild Theater, right there, come across the street. And, and a very elderly Vietnamese man uh, grew up in Vietnam. His father was a baker there, and Vietnam was controlled by the French, and so they had a lot of French bread cooking, and so he learned this as a child and came here. and, and I'd go over there and talk and talk and talk, and I understood much of what he said, but um, I asked him if he would teach me the secrets. <laughs> well, he thought I was going to open some bread store across the street and put him out of business, which I wasn't going to do. I just thought I could learn from him, but he did share a few things with me. So I, um, I have not learned how to bake bread yet, but um, <laughs> I do know that you start with it like Jesus said. You start with this just mess of flour, way too much flour. And uh, anybody ever made bread? No, I'm not talking about opening the Weber's wrapper, you know. And, you know this is like making bread, right? So, brew okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> if we have one. So, um, I've tried the bread machines, which you're supposed to throw a bunch of stuff in and out comes a loaf of bread. <laughs> you know? And, and uh, it was kind of magic, you know. And, and then um, I was going through the drawers and I found a couple of packs of yeast, rapid rise yeast. And I noticed that they'd expired a couple of years before. You know how it stays in the drawers, though, you know. I mean, and I thought, you know, so what? <laughs> and uh, it's going to be really good. So I, I got everything together and, and I, I put in a, a pack of the yeast. And the next morning, I woke up and I could smell the smell of bread in the house. Oh, so cool. Oh, yeah. Even with expired yeast. <laughs> and uh, I go downstairs and I open it up. And there's like this brick. <laughs> it's like it started to rise a little and then it collapsed on itself and just hardened there. Now, it had all the ingredients of bread and it, and it had the smell of bread, which was really cool. And it was a brick. <laughs> so I decided I would take it a step further. So I had three more packs of expired stuff, so I put them all in there. <laughs> all in there. Because, you know, if, a, if it's dead, you know, more of that could really help. You know, this is gonna kick it, so I did that, and I came down, you know, the next morning, it smelled really nice and everything, and now I've got two blocks of brick. <laughs> it does not work when it's expired. And, and I want to talk about this because um, when it comes to our faith and our spiritual lives, and I'm guilty of this more than anybody, um, it's easy to stop growing and stop sharing what we're struggling with and rely on old experiences, right? But I wonder if there's an expiration date on those. That... Um, I understand. It's easier for me to share with you a problem that was solved, you know, and then I can share it and you go, oh, isn't he being vulnerable? Well, that was solved like 10 years ago, so, you know, it's not really vulnerable. It's kind of like faux vulnerability, you know. <laughs> it feels like it, but it's not really. But if you talk about what are we grappling with this week, well, that's not resolved yet. Hope it will, maybe it is, we're working on. And that's where we grow when we share that, when our, when our story is current. You know. I wish I was someone who all the things worked out years ago. I've had a lot of problems, but it all worked out, and now I can tell you how great things are. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? Well, that'd probably be boring. <laughs> But instead, I found out, you know what? I had all those problems back there, and yeah, a lot of them worked out everything, but now I got a whole new crop of them. And I'm still grappling with things. And where's, is that going to be in this? And what do I do? And where did I, you know, I, I got all those things too. And we've got to be sharing those because, because something happens. The kingdom of God grows when we're not just sharing the expired stuff. Right? Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. These are. Fleischmann's rapid rise, <laughs> instant, you know. 
I was going to make up a bunch of dough last night and then let it just go crazy and bring it in and watch it, you know. But I thought, well, that's too much like a children's sermon. <laughs> but I did bring this because it's fast acting. Um, here's the thing. Very similar to the issue of the seed in the garden, right? If I took a big pile of flour, put a little olive oil in it, a little salt, a little bit of sugar, you know, and then um, tore off one of these packs, or take, take both of them, really, and throw it in. I could wait for a few hours, like it says to do, and that bread will never rise. Why? Because you didn't open the packets. Yeah, they're getting it now. Yeah. <laughs> didn't open the packet. It's the same issue as this, the pack of seeds. What, what does the yeast have to do? Thank you. Yes, it has to go throughout the bread. That's what I was doing wrong. Okay, so um, yeah, it has to be uh, stirred in, but then um, what? It has to feed, and it has, and you have to knead. They call it kneading it, where you like pound the beat the stew out of the you know, bam. Oh, you think of people that you don't like, or the bam, 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 bam. They pull over you, bam. Why are you laughing, David? I, you know. <laughs> I can just think of all the folks you're pissing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In Christian love. Bam! <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll take that off the video probably right there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the thing is, though, yeah, I mean, you have to, you work that thing. And that's what the, my friend, the Vietnamese guy who has the French baby, was telling me about how, you know, they have these special machines that work it, and then he works it, and they get an encounter in there, and, and they just stir it up, you know? Like the Bob Marley song, not unlike that. We got to stir up. Now, here's the problem. Do we like it when in our lives we feel ourselves getting pounded? You like that? Yeah. Do, do we like to have life roll over us and flip us over and then, you know, do that? Do, do we like it? No. I want everything to be smooth and easy. But the kingdom of God is like the yeast getting worked into the bread, into the flour, into the dough. And it gets worked in and it gets worked in. And the only way it gets worked in is by agitation. Okay? So, you know what that means? And, and Jesus gave us a clue. It's the last thing he said to his uh, followers. In this world, you will have agitation. That's how we become open to the kingdom of God. That's how we become open to God's presence and his power and his leading and, and his uh, nurturing in our lives is that it happens in the process of the agitation. So the very thing that I don't want is the thing I need. Okay, so what do you do after it's been kneaded? What do you do after you beat the stew out of the dough and get the yeast through it? What do you do next? Let it rest. Yeah, let it rest. Yeah, let it rest there. I go, oh, good. So there is some rest time. That's good. It's not constant. <laughs> okay, you do get to rest. And then, so you let it rest for a few hours or so, and then you bring it out, and now everything's okay? No. You start all over again. Bam! Bam! You know, and, and, and you kick that thing around again, and you go, I feel so sorry for the dough right now, <laughs> you know. We should be kind, we should be tender, we shouldn't have to put it through this process, right? And it's the only way it's gonna work. How many times in your life have you felt like, I want to know God's presence in my life. I want to know, I want my relationship with Jesus to be real and authentic, and I want him alive in me and nurturing and growing me to be the man or the woman that he intended me to be when he first thought me up. I want that, but no agitation, no rough spots. Just gently put me in the flower and step back. You know, I used to think that that's, that's what God did for us. You know, if you accept Jesus into your life, your life is going to be so smooth. It'll be great. Everybody will like you. 
you get promoted, you know, you'll be prosperous and, and smart, you know, clever, all those things. And nothing bad will happen because bad things only happen to those people. Guess how wrong I was. Oh, man. I was totally wrong. Because God reaches us in the agitation. In those times when we're feeling pummeled by our life. And, and when it's times when we most feel like, why is this happening? What, what's going on? Where is God? If God was here, I wouldn't be going through this. And it's God going, come on, come on, you're going to grow, you're going to rise, you're going to grow, you know. And so what happens is we need to embrace the stirred up times and go, I'm in, I'm in a time where it's stirring up. God must be at work. That's really different than where's God when I'm going through hard times. It's I'm going through hard times. God must be here. This must be a time for me to grow and learn. Rise up. Now, there is a lie, and so I'll tell you this, Fleischmann's rapid rise. That's a lie. You do pay a little more for this, because you feel like, I'm just gonna put this in there, bake some bread today, and be ready for dinner. It's not, okay. Rapid rise still has to sit for hours and hours, and you're like, come on. There is no rapid discipleship. There is no rapid spiritual growth. There is no instant maturity. It always involves the time. Even the seeds that are in the ground, it, doesn't, it didn't instantly turn into a big plant. You can bet. It sat there for a while. And the seed's going, why am I here? Kind of like you do sometimes. <laughs> What's going on? This has been a long time. <laughs> you know, it has been a long time. And for some of us, we've had issues in our lives that, that seem to never end, right? And we have things in relationships that seem to go on and on. And we go, where's the rapid fix? And of course, the kingdom of God doesn't have that. Because God's always honest with us. And so it is over time. Now, I love the, what, what our, our friends in, in uh, recovery do, where you can celebrate a birthday. You know, one week. Woohoo! One month, three months, a year. You don't have to wait for a year. That, isn't that cool? I think we should do that uh, in the church. We should be celebrating our growth times in much shorter measurements. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> if you come in and people are high fiving you and going, hey, hey, you made it this week. And we go, I did, didn't I? Because we never stop needing to be affirmed and reminded of how far we've come. We know how far we have to go. We don't need to be reminded of that. But we can say, wow. I, I played too much golf and, uh, because it's a Microcosm. Jesus never told a parable about golf, okay? So I just make that clear. But this week I, I was playing with some guys, and uh, Christian Kim, who, uh, a friend of mine, Korean, who's a fabulous player, uh, came up to me yesterday morning and said, I see you've really improved. And I said, really? Tell me what you see. He said, well, when we first used to play, You'd take the club back, and then your back's when you'd say, oh, crap! And, then you'd say, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that odd. <laughs> but today, you take the club back, and you hit it, and then say, oh, crap! <laughs> and you are, you're really a <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think. I think. But we can't.
can see that there's a future and a hope, right? We don't have to just think we're stuck where we are or where we've been. Back a uh, long, long time ago, first, first book I wrote was called Building Strong People. And uh, a friend of ours wrote a poem at the time I was writing this and, and said, oh, this is what I've been thinking about. And I thought it was so good that I actually fit, I ended the book with a poem, Dottie O'Dell's poem. She was looking back in the mirror, I see a shadowy image. It's tentative lines tracing the limits of yesterday. The reality of today springs from yesterday's shadows, drawing shape, form, and reason from tomorrow's dreams. In each today lies seeds for tomorrow. I choose to grow the ones I need to become my person for the new day. I choose to grow the ones I need to become my person for the new day. Huh. When I read that, I thought, wow, I could learn from her because I'm always trying to figure out how to fix the past, right? How to make that right. How to... And I'm really bad at going back in time and fixing things, okay? I just want you to know that I'm not as good at that as you are, probably. <laughs> but what if we took what God gives us, the seeds, and use them for tomorrow. I think that's how we see God's kingdom at work in us. That's how we, we see our relationship with Jesus coming alive and real. Now we've talked about the seeds, the growing, the small amounts. We've talked about the bread, the yeast, the rapid rise, false advertising. Um, and now we come to uh, our sharing of communion, which is, a, which is a very parallel experience because Jesus said that this bread is my body broken for you, take and eat. And it's, and it's as if we take that bread, small amount, right? You don't have to take the whole loaf, small amount. And, and as we eat it, it becomes part of our body. And, and it's a symbol of Jesus becoming part of who we are and permeating every aspect of our life and nurturing us and growing us.